Hey, what's up everybody? I'm starting a uh, new uh, sort of playlist for you guys. Uh, this one is going to go over uh, how things are done in certain apps, uh, or at least how I thought they were implemented. Uh, have you ever used an app before on the uh, App Store and you come across this really cool uh, feature or this uh, really cool transition or something like that and you always wondered yourself how it was done? Well, uh, I downloaded Spotify for the first time not too long ago and uh, started using it and their sign-in screen had a video background and I thought that was really cool and I wanted to uh, show you guys how I think they might have implemented it. Uh, so let's go ahead and get started. I'm going to minimize my video real quick. So to give you an example of what we're going to do, I'll go ahead and pull up the app. So I created this fictional coffee company app and this is their sign-in screen. As you can see I have a video playing in the background of uh, someone pouring coffee into a coffee cup and I'll make sure to link uh, uh, the video and all the resources I've used in the description uh, as well as the website where I got that video from. It's called pixabay.com. I use it for all kinds of things. You can get pictures and videos there and of course they are all royalty free. Uh, the logo I went to a website and got that uh, just developed. I there's like a, It was like a little drag and drop type thing and created it that way. And I'll link that in the description. I'll also include it in the, uh, the GitHub project. So let's go ahead and get started. So first uh, let's look at the folder structure. Uh, you're going to need to create a raw folder uh, within your resources directory. This is where you're going to keep your videos and uh, I have found that mp4s work best for me. Um, I, To be honest with you I've been too afraid to try any other type of file type mp4s though are fairly small you definitely don't want to use an avi uh, those are just way too huge especially for an android app uh, so create a raw folder and you're going to add your video into there and then in the drawable i have several things set up i'm going to pull up the app again so i have um, I have my logo. Um, I created a, a screenshot or I captured the first frame of the video. Uh, and that is, uh, it's really big right now, but that's what this is. Um, this is the coffee cup. Well, actually, no, that's the, uh, I'm going to remove that one real quick because we're not using that one. And close these out. So we are using this one, this little icon for the coffee cup that's within the button. And then these are some social media sign in buttons. Uh, and I'll show you uh, in the description the website or awesome online tool I use to generate those. And then uh, for the transparent background, for these edit text and the button, I created a shape called it transparent underscore VG and I gave it the color black. Uh, that's the color code for black right there. But this 80, 80, that is for the uh, transparency value. And I'll give you an awesome chart that shows uh, how to work with transparency and color in Android Studio. So I'm going to go ahead and close all of those. So that's what's in my drawable folder. So now let's get to the cool stuff. So the way I have my layout set up in the main activity is I have the video layout inside a frame layout, but that's included in its own separate layout file. Uh, one of the reasons I did this, I don't know if this is over engineering, <laughs> the app or whatnot, but I know in web development it's a good practice to include a uh, 
first a picture of the first frame of your video while the video is loading in the background and so that my way of doing that was I set my main activity this frame layout here as the background of that uh, that frame and then I lay this on top of it which now that I'm thinking about it that might just negate <laughs> this background altogether because it's going to be using this background so but that's something to kind of play around with um, what made me think about that was and it could just be the emulator being slow but when I run the app there's that black for a split second there so that's what I was trying to trying to mess with but let's go to the most important layout, the video sign-in layout. And I'll scroll up to the top. So this is a constraint layout. And the way we have it set up is I have um, my logo. And I had to play with the uh, length and width of this to get it the way I wanted it to. And I also adjusted the width and uh, height of all of the... Uh, edit text and buttons and just move things around to to where they would look nice uh, the big one though if you want to know how to put an icon inside of a button what I did was I, I set up my colors and everything and I, cre I set it to that transparent background use this property here Android drawable left and then feed it the uh, icon. Uh, be careful with your size. You want to make sure that the size is icon size because if you were to set it to say the coffee background um, picture it's it's gonna look way too huge. It's just not gonna work right. So be careful with what size image you use for the icon within your button. And then I gave the button a little padding and I set the gravity to left center and I adjusted the pad left padding of the button to just kind of get it uh, centered a little bit. So that's how you add an icon inside of a button. Uh, and then these are image buttons that are just set to the uh, social media um, uh, icons there. The big one though, and the most important one, is the video view. Uh, I set this up as the first view. Everything else is laid on top of it. So you can see the uh, hierarchy here. So the main things you want to do is um, make sure the video view fills up the entire screen. In this case I just left the ID as video view. I'm going to go ahead and close those and get to the main activity. And so in our main activity, you want to create a uh, video view variable, a media player variable, and an int that's going to hold the position uh, of the video. And then uh, in your on create, you're going to hook up your video view to the UI and that's in your layout. And then you're going to build a URI to that video file that you're using within your raw folder. Uh, so first um, always start it with android.resource and then add your package name slash and then the resource ID of the video. In this case it's set to coffee. Uh, I'll change it just so that you can see that uh, it changes. But um, actually let's go ahead and do that. We'll change it to the water. Water video. Okay. And then uh, you want to set your URI to your video view by calling set video URI and passing that in. And then you'll want to start the video view. Uh, the most important thing that you can set up on this video view is the on prepared listener. This is where everything gets started. And if you want to know more about it, uh, I'll also include the link in the description, but you can check out the Android docs here on the video view. Um, so I pass in the media player, 
that it uh, it sets up into my own media player variable. And then I want my video to loop over and over and over again. So I set looping to true. And then I check uh, the current uh, safe position. And um, if it's not zero, I'll seek to that current video position. And then I'll start the video there. Now, the most important thing about implementing a video background is uh, you, you're going to have to handle that media player during the activity lifecycle. I want to show you what it looks like if I did not override those methods. I'll go ahead and push that to the emulator. I'll wait for the uh, Gradle to build there should uh, take only a minute or so. Okay, so the Gradle has built the project and pushed it to the emulator and now this is what uh, the other video looks like. Uh, this also uh, shows a good example. You'll want to think about what kind of video you are putting in and uh, make sure it works with your UI well. See how it washes out the letters of my logo. Uh, you don't want that to happen in a, a production app. But now, uh, since I don't have the activity lifecycle in mind here, let's see what happens when I kinda, if I just were to hit the home button and go back in. It sets it to, uh, to nothing. Uh, it doesn't restart the video or anything. The only way to resolve this is if I were to just destroy the activity and then open it again, the video will start. So the way that you prevent that from happening is you're going to have to override the on pause, on resume, and on destroy uh, methods. And in your on pause what I did, and this isn't necessarily required, but uh, I captured the current video position and I paused the video. And uh, just, uh, you call that, you get your position by calling the media player dot get current position. And on resume, this is the, definitely the biggest one. Uh, this will start your video again instead of it just being, just being blank. When your activity resumes and on destroy, you want to kind of clean up and uh, release the media player and set it to null. Uh, if you do not override these three, your uh, video background is not going to work well. Okay, believe it or not, that is all you really need to add a video to the background of your activity. Just make sure you uh, override that on pause, um, on resume, and on destroy methods to properly handle your media player though. Uh, without that, uh, you're going to have uh, some issues with that app. So don't forget that and uh, if you're new here, don't forget to uh, like and subscribe and hit that notification button so that you'll be notified when my next video comes out. Um, thank you guys for submitting in all those requests uh, for new tutorials. I'm diligently working on those. Uh, things are going well. Um, the first one should be out within a week or so. Uh, I'm paying attention to the comments. Uh, I, I love your responses so far and it really helps me to continue. Uh, thank you guys for everything and I hope you have a great day.